You are listening to Unapologetic Talk, brought to you by We The People. Bringing some common sense with a little New York disrespect. We The People, for the people, by the people. (laughs) 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 The the intro music, talk. (laughs) Yo, it's Rally Rebel. It's Dobbs Cartier. And this is Unapologetic Talk. Yo, today we got... um, Two of my favorite, some of my favorite. I say some of my favorite because it's, a, uh, it's another member oh, that's yeah. not here today. Mm-hmm. But they bring me so much energy at the marches, man. And the same thing as your actions too, like yeah, um, same it's thing like was a cool. whole bunch of people's actions. But like you know what I mean? Uh, they they've been so loyal to my actions that I just like uh, the energy. I don't know, man. That's what I tell you. I tell y'all all the time. Like, I feel like I can just pull up with y'all and the and the and the, and the bikers. Yeah, and we can just, that's the goal. You know, you want it to sound protest. like it's like a hundred people, even yeah. when it's ten people, and that's what you do when you have a yeah. good drum section. So for real, the way the rude mechanical orchestra can show up to a space and amplify whatever message that's Makes going sense. on is really like big up to y'all. Shout oh, out to y'all. So that's who is in here today, that's the Rude Mechanical Orchestra. Yeah, <laughs> we got Betsy and Jason in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout yeah. out to Jason. Yeah. Talk, talk, talk. Betsy. I should say too, the Rude Mechanical Orchestra is a much bigger group oh, than yeah. just us. Yeah. Um, it's a band that's been around since 2004, so we actually like just turned 20 this year, Jeez. which is Shit. wild. Yeah, that's another <laughs> that's um, there's a lot of history in the group. Um, like a lot of members who, you know, have been in it for a long time. Um, but Jason and I and Gail, our friend who's not here today, um, are three people who play drums in the Armo. And we've been showing up to Rally's actions, Dine's actions for a couple of years now. So, yeah. 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 Three up in that joint right before. I don't know. I was in there for a minute, man. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and I, I just like like just um being dedicated to the fight. Like you yeah. know, you guys just like dedicated to the fight. Um and y'all amplify, you know what I mean, the right voices and it's just like I think that's fire and um y'all bring energy to the like, you know what I mean? Without the yeah. drums it doesn't matter, yeah. like, you know what I mean? Without the drums <laughs> that, that energy yeah. is just like with the dead, triangle, like, uh, whatever you got, you come yeah. in yeah. like powerful. <laughs> yeah. I mean I think that's really the goal of like obviously I'm one member, I don't speak for the whole band, but I think that's one thing that's been always part of the goal of the group is like we don't organize our own actions. You know, we try not to be like on the mic or like speaking too much. We really want to be amplifying. So like that's exactly the right word, I think. Yeah. 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 And that's what is dope too, because even like when it gets hectic and it like like it gets uh turned up and the cops be moving all crazy and I'll still be like, ah and Yeah, I'll still be like drumming up like, yeah. Yeah, I'm <laughs> like, like I'm gonna give you a beat while you're yelling at the yeah. Gracie Mansion or whatever. And it, keeps, it, keeps, it keeps um also like like when and it has been times where um, it's been hectic, where they've been, yeah. uh, like, going crazy. And I'll tell you, like, I'll even look, like, better keep keep drumming, keep drumming. Like, it, it yeah. just keeps me focused, like, all right, yeah. you know what I mean? Nobody panic. We got this. We got like, this. focus just on the message. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, and then, all right, so you have been one of the biggest advocates of keeping it safe when it comes to COVID since I met you. Like, you know what oh, I mean? It's, thank it's you, like yeah. Almost, uh hard to catch you without your mask on. So. <laughs> 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 yeah. I was practicing self care. Yeah. yeah. Safety precautions. And um uh, uh one of our people not here today, Rudy you already know. Right. Um, shout out to Rudy. Shout out to Rudy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yo, yo, that's fire stuff. Yo, that's fire. Yeah. Yo, yeah, so shout out to Rudy he couldn't uh, be here today. Like um they won't let Rudy be great on his uh you know he's a black creative on Black Sky. He's uh created his own like um uh you know how Twitter is mm-hmm. created his own thing off Blue Sky, um, black like a black network. black Twitter. It's um instead of a black Twitter, it's like a black sky. It's the next, you know, what I mean thing. So we can get off of Twitter and get over here because Elon going crazy on Twitter. So, yeah, but um, <laughs> fuck Elon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, but yeah, it's, uh, he got people like harassing him and doing stupid stuff. So he had to handle that like that. You know what I mean? You got to handle that. But um, he'll be back next week. But um, he just came back last week. From having COVID, yeah, you know what I mean, and uh, it, it, it was, uh, you know what I mean. He said it got it got bad. Um, and I, I reflected on the time I had it now. Since I've been out here, um, I, I did get the I got two vaccines. You know what I mean? Um, 
And you know, I, I was like against it. Like it's people that's like, ah, I was one yeah. of those people that was going crazy against it. Um, I was also one of those people um, when it first came out, when it, when it first started being all on the news and stuff, I was one of those people that was, oh man, shit fake. Oh, uh, the news, because you see, I'm oh, like, yeah. conspiracies and all that type of shit. I'm like, oh, they, 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 they doing some bullshit to us. This is that, this is that. And I was like, and I can't get my old page back, but on my old page, I had it, um, I had it, I even had it in my story. You know, I do stories and stuff all the time. But I had it in my stories, but I was like, everybody out here acting all, you know what I mean? This and that. And somebody was like, yo, you, could, yo, you sound like you sick. And I swear, like a couple of days later, I had it, oh and my I God. had it bad. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah. To the point, um, like all the symptoms they were saying, um, not not the not tasting part because I don't think I was trying to eat because I was throwing up. I had, I caught a fever. Yeah. Um, the smelling part, I couldn't do that. Um, it was like once or twice I had a problems with with the breathing, and that's where it scared me. Yeah. Where I I was scared to go to the hospital too because at that time this is this is like you know what I mean like before. It shut down. Oh, yeah. So um, I was, you know, every time I was watching the news, we be seeing body bags. And if you, oh, you go yeah. to the hospital, they ain't letting you mm -hmm. back out. This and that, your family mm -hmm. can't see you. And I just be like, oh, I ain't going to the hospital. Yeah. <laughs> so crazy. I don't know, but I ended up, it, it, I, I got myself together. It was like three weeks. And that's before. And then when I ended up coming back to work, uh, I think I wasn't all the way there. And they sent me home. And I came back a couple of days later. And so I came back. It was like we shut down early, and then uh, like a day after that, it was a quarantine. Yeah. So everybody was locked down. Um, but yeah. So, have you ever had COVID like to that to that extent? Yeah. Uh, what so what made you a strong advocate? Yeah, uh, it's a good question. So also just to give people like a bit of the background. Um, so I'm a journal. I'm a journalist in my day job. I'm a science journalist. Um, and I was just like a year out of college when the pandemic started in 2020. So I was pretty new to everything at the time I was working at like a journalism startup and I was helping with the science coverage. So I started doing all the COVID coverage and just have continued from there writing about COVID and long COVID. Um, and last year I and a friend of mine started the sick times, which is a new news publication specifically focused on long COVID. So. I'll talk about that more later, I think. But yeah, I think I think for me, like the pandemic combined with the all the protests in 2020 was like a real political awakening for me. And I've continued to see all the connections between these different issues in terms of like wanting to keep my community safe, wanting to keep the people I care about safe. Um, like to me, it's all it's all connected. Um, and also just like as a journalist, I think many of us have this desire to, you know, find out what's going on, like speak truth to power, I think is the kind of common phrase. And these days, as we're here in like 2024, like we're in a huge COVID surge right now. Mm -hmm. um, but many leaders are not talking about it. You know, the Democratic National Convention just happened and like n there were zero COVID precautions and now a bunch of people are sick, right? <laughs> like, like they've just ignored it and, and you, 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 you can't actually ignore it. Like Biden in a speech a few weeks ago was like, oh, I ended the pandemic. And then a few days later he has COVID and he's dropped out of the race. Like you can't, you can't actually ignore this. Um, but that's what all of our political leaders and all the mainstream media is trying to do. So I think a lot of my work is just like, I want to make sure that the correct information is still getting out there. Um, and having an independent news site, I think is a good way to do that because the mainstream media, you know, like I freelance for some of these bigger publications uh, and editors really just want to like put on their own narrative. You know, you, you, can't, you can't frame things exactly how you want to. You can't get all the information out there the way you want to get it out there. And so having your own site where you kind of have control over that, I think is really helpful. Yeah. Um, oh. Yeah. No, I think I have a comment though, like just based on what Betsy was talking about, like we were even talking about this and we touch on it all the time when we think about podcasts or creating our own yeah. sense of media outlets where we can spread the right information because these people in power or like these corrupt officials are always spreading misinformation. Yeah. So I think that is dope. Like yeah. you taking that into your own hands and being like, we have access to the right information. Let's spread it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that's um, all right. Yeah, that's that's the other thing. Um, like when New York happened, when when it happened, New York was a hot spot. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And I think it's probably like if, it, like you said, a surgeon, and they're not talking about it, and um, they're telling us not to wear the mask. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, hey, you always got your mask on. That's what, have you ever had any? Um, has since since they said that, have has anybody ever stopped you or tried to make you take your mask off now? Um, I mean, I definitely am aware of my privilege. Like as a white person, I think it's probably less likely for me than for a lot of other folks. Um, oh, yeah. You know, yeah, like I'm very that. cognizant of that. I did have one experience when I was traveling last summer. My partner and I were traveling in Europe, and I have this like more intense mask that I wear when I'm traveling. It's like a, a respirator that people wear. Originally, I think the intention is like construction work, but um, it works similarly to a high quality N95, and I just find it more comfortable to wear for long periods of time, so I wear it on flights. And I was wearing this in the Amsterdam airport, and I actually got pulled aside for a security screening. Oh, no. uh, and the security guards in the airport were like, we need to understand, like, why you're wearing this mask, <laughs> you know. <laughs> like, in Europe, I think it's, in, it, it probably depends on where you are, but at least my experience traveling there, it was, like, very, very few masks. Um, and people were very, like, just did not understand what I was, like, what we were doing. Um, and yeah, it was like they thought I was a terrorist or something because I was wearing this like respirator and I was like, no, I'm just like trying to protect myself. But it was, there was a bit of a language barrier too. Eventually, eventually we figured it out. Um, but it was a very stressful moment. And I think about that a lot these days because now we have all these threats of mask bans, right? In New York City and a lot of other states, uh, cities. Mm -hmm. um, the Sick Times, uh, my publication, we just published an article about this um, by a freelance journalist named Justine Barron. Uh, so she kind of analyzed and she uh, looked at like every state to see what their legislation is like around mask bans. Um, There's one thing that is like important to recognize about this is that while there have been these news stories about bans like Nassau County, for example, Long Island just passed one. Uh, there are actually many historical laws that now may be enforced more or enforced more heavily because we have this climate of like anti-mask, associating the masks with protests, associating them with like quote unquote anti-Semitism, which is really, you know, like pro-Palestine protests wearing them a lot of the time yeah. and all of this stuff. So, you know, there, there's all this, like, there are all these historical laws and the, the piece goes into this a bit. Um, that you basically like could be enforced more or could get sort of a boost from this kind of overall climate. Um, and so, you know, people who are like advocates for COVID safety, disability advocates really are saying like, the way you can help fight against this is by wearing a mask yourself. Like we wanna make it so that it's more popular again, so that if police see, you know, a bunch of people on the subway wearing masks, they're not gonna arrest everybody. It's, it's like the same kind of numbers game that we want when we have marches. You want to have like every, like big numbers there, and make it harder to kind of stop stop the big group, right? Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. Um, and Bessie, Bessie don't play with this mass situation or or the COVID thing. <laughs> like, um, yeah, I have had it at least <laughs> once that I know of, so I'm not like totally perfect, but yeah. you know, I do my best. And before we before we came on here, before people would come in, like uh, Bessie was like, we gotta take the COVID test. Yeah. And then we got a video of that. You know, <laughs> Yeah. Got a video mm -hmm. of that, but um, yeah. But no, it's um, I think yeah, people people got it, and we got the and that's RGC before they were giving it, they were giving the test out like For crazy. Food. Yeah. Um, our, you know, mutual aid is having them. I remember we had boxes, boxes of uh tests that we could give out. Um, different groups that would call us, and we got the test now, and now they're back in the store, and they cost money and twenty dollars um, a pop. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I advise people to like, uh, you know what I mean? If you just to keep yourself safe and keep everybody else safe, and uh, you gotta protect yourself. And but the, the, is there a new virus variant out? Yeah, I mean the virus has been like mutating continuously basically since 2020. So that every like, every couple months there's a new variant, um, and we did we do have a couple going around right now that contributed to the surge across the U.S. this summer. Although I feel like this is another example, I think, of the mainstream media sort of presenting a specific narrative because there are always these articles like, oh, it's this variant. It's not just the variant. It's also our behavior as a society, mm -hmm. right? Like if you remember back in 2020 or 2021, 
when more people were masking, like the COVID numbers were much lower, um, especially like spring 2021 when people were just getting vaccinated. Um, and that, that was really driven by not just the virus itself, but like how we were behaving around the virus. Mm -hmm. And so when I write about, you know, like the current COVID picture, I do these like weekly updates at the sick times. And I always try to emphasize that, um, it's really this like behavior, the collective, oh, is that me or Riley? No. Yeah. Um, it's really like that behavior, like, you know, people not masking, people not staying home when they're sick, not testing, and also the government not giving us any of those resources anymore uh, that, that yeah. kind of contributes to the virus continuing to spread the way that it is. So to keep that in perspective, I guess. Yeah. Um, everybody got treated like it's 2020 again. I don't think we should. <laughs> I mean, we don't we don't, don't need like. Like, I feel like the, uh, the criticism often is like, oh, do you want to go back to lockdowns? And it's like, no, we don't need to do that. Like, we have a lot of tools, technology. Like, we, mm. have, we have masks that work well. We have tests. You know, we have the ability to, like, clean our air better in indoor spaces, like, put in uh, HEPA filters and stuff like that. Like, we have a lot of things we can do that are just not yeah. being done in most places. Yeah, the, the lockdown, I think the lockdown was, like, to stop, to stop the spread at yeah. the beginning. But um, and that's, uh, the, the spread was so crazy at the beginning because nobody yeah. was taking the cautious. But, yeah. uh, like I'm saying, like, yeah, be cautious as you was in 2020. Wash your hands, wear a mask. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. If you're Especially sick, around this time. stay home. Yeah. You know, do yeah. not affect anybody else. It's yeah. not worth it. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. protect yeah. your health. You also Our never health. know, like, if you're in the grocery store or on the subway or something, like, you never know if the person next to you is someone who is immunocompromised or has long COVID and, like, really doesn't want to be infected again. Like, you never, you never know. And so just, like, taking that precaution, you're probably helping out the people around you, too. So it's really that, like, we keep us safe <laughs> mentality and practice. You know who's crazy? <laughs> Yo, yesterday we was watching, uh, they had 30, 30, uh, subway moments, crazy subway moments. Yeah. And, um, they showed this clip from 2020 and it was, <laughs> it was bad. It was like, um, they, you know, they, both of the women's had masks on, but you know, the older woman had coughed. Oh. <laughs> around a woman and she just like jumped in the air and like kicked her, <laughs> kicked her onto the track. And it was just like, it was bad, but it was just like. Oh man, and like I remember and like how crazy COVID it was back in 2020 yeah. about the <laughs> coughing and the sneezing. Yeah. I remember one time I had sneezed and I was just like so embarrassed. It was just like, <laughs> <laughs> like the sneeze, oh, you get embarrassed. Like I was just looking around like you, oh. everybody <laughs> was holding in their cough. Yeah. Like yeah. nobody wanted to cough I, on the I, train I to get like looked at weird. Yeah. yeah. No, same. Yeah. Yeah, same, yeah. but it's it was a lot more severe back then. Yeah, I mean, nobody knew what was going on. Like, we were all so freaked out, yeah. I think, especially in New York City. Like, you would hear the sirens going all night and all that stuff. So, I, yeah. you know. I mean, and then when that curfew that no one listened to. Oh, oh yeah. I did listen to that. <laughs> I remember that. That was like, uh, yeah. When, um, when I came, when I started coming here for City Hall, mm -hmm. Occupy City Hall, and I get off the train um, at Penn Station, it used to be a ghost town. Yeah. I used to be able to like to walk down 34th Street. I no did cars, love that. No nothing. I yeah. did. I used to skateboard a lot more and back that, then. Skateboarding mm -hmm. down the streets, the empty streets yeah, at yeah. night. Yeah, empty streets. Wow. It was, like, you know, I'd never yeah. seen New York like that. That was crazy. It was like a movie. Yeah. Yeah. I do miss that. But yeah, yeah. All, right. all right. So you've been, since it's been going on, like, like people, like, people stopped paying attention to it since, uh, since like, Damn it, 2020, you know what I mean? It's almost like, uh, well, no, as people start paying attention to it, and then we got, we got, we got, we got the high official, like you said, leaders that come out, and like, like you said, Biden come out, he beat it. Um, yeah. They got rid of it, but then he catches it. <laughs> um, <laughs> and that's so crazy, because, like, I think, like, like, our, like, stuff happens so fast that we just forget that yeah. he had a debate, and he said he, you know what I mean? He got yeah. rid of it. Yeah, it's like no, he did not do that. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So it's it's um, this dude. Yeah, it's, it's crazy, but all right. So, but you have, you have written um throughout like all right. So I remember, I think it was like in 2022, around I can't remember like exactly what marches, you guys started coming, but I remember being at um, was that Foley Square? Foley Square, and I remember you had a. Uh, 
an article or something then. I remember like telling you um, to get up there and tell people about, you know, COVID. But you, you, since we've been going on and every time I know like you always give me an update about, you know, um, COVID or what was going on and, and I'm glad you do because a lot of people don't talk about it. Yeah. But um, I, I know you have brought some, uh, some pieces or something that you wanted to show or. Yeah, so we could talk about maybe the testing would be a helpful one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so yeah. that's something I've written about a lot in New York City because we used to have, like, one of the biggest testing infrastructures here in the U.S. Um, New York City, I mean, I think partially because we had such a horrible surge in 2020 and, like, people were really paying attention to it here. Uh, also, we have a public health department that's pretty big and, like, well-resourced at the city level. Um, and so New York City used to do a lot of great stuff around COVID. Um, for example, we used to have like so many free testing sites. Now there's just a handful of them. Mm -hmm. And also New York City, uh, one thing that's unique and that I like to tell people about is we have a couple, like the only public long COVID clinics in the country, or at least some of the first, the first one of, ones of those. Um, so they're run by health and hospitals. There's three of them, one in Brooklyn, one in the Bronx, and one in Queens. And they are really meant to be places that people can go if they're having symptoms and they like have questions. Um, there's a hotline you can call, so you can call and like talk to somebody, like explain what's going on. And if they think you know you might have you might be dealing with long COVID symptoms, um, they can help you make an appointment. And it's you know since it's uh, run by health and hospitals, um, it's open to anybody, regardless of insurance status. They have ways to like help people pay for healthcare, um, and these clinics are meant to be like a kind of central location to get a bunch of different appointments. So they don't just have like primary primary care doctors; they also have different specialists and ways to get different kinds of tests done and stuff like that. Um, obviously, they're not perfect. Like long COVID advocates in the city who I've talked to have issues and like say that they are, they, they're not offering like the full spectrum of everything that folks would need, but it's still really, really useful to have this like easily accessible resource. Um, and so I try to let, kind of try to let people know about those. Um, you can maybe put the link to the story in the episode description or mm -hmm. something. Um, plus New York City is doing some research to try and figure out that like is. how long, yeah, I think that's the piece. Mm -hmm. um, New York City also is doing some research to try and figure out how long COVID is impa impacting here, people here specifically, which is an important kind of step for public health departments to be doing. Um, we have some like nationwide data, but it's not very specific when you're looking at particularly, you know, like disadvantaged communities like black and brown folks in New York City. There's some research that suggests may have higher rates of long COVID, um, but a lot of work needs to be done to understand that more and figure out what the government can be doing to help people. So it's it's kind of a starting point. There's always a lot more they could do, but it's it's good that New York City is like somewhat leading the way on this stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you was um, telling me, what was it? You said MPR or MC? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was it? Well, okay, I explain yeah, that. So explain it that was, uh, yeah, so it was, yeah. So the testing stories I did a couple of these in like 2022 and 23 for uh, Gothamist and WNYC, which is the NPR station uh, in New York. And so I basically was keeping track of how, like I said, the city used to have so many free testing sites for COVID. Uh, they used to have all those vans. Folks might remember like if you were in Midtown Manhattan or Lower Manhattan, it would be like every block there was one of these. And some of them were run by the city, some of them were run by private companies. Um, but the city had a lot of these, and now they've like completely ended that program as of uh, spring of last year. Mm -hmm. It ended with the federal public health emergency ending for COVID. Um, and now we're down to just a handful of testing sites. So you can still go to health and hospitals and like get tested at the hospitals. There's also a site run by the health department that's in Crown Heights. Um, so. I'll try to share a link to that so we can put it in the episode description too. But if you live in Brooklyn or like around that area, it's a good place to go. And they, um, I actually just went there yesterday because <laughs> I was at the US Open last week and I was like, that's a huge oh, event, shit. I should get tested. So I went there yeah. yesterday and I just got my results like before we were starting to record. Um, so it's like within 24 hours, which is, which is pretty nice and it's all free. And they test you for COVID, flu and RSV on, in like one test. So oh, it's kind yeah. of nice. Um, is that a shot? 
What? Is that a shot? No, it's just like a nasal swab. But oh, okay. they have a machine where they can just test it for multiple diseases at once. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's kind of nice. Yeah. Oh, you said it's in Crown Heights? Yeah. It's by uh, St. John's Park, if you know where that is. Hmm. They also have a lab. It's like similar to that. They do like swab testing, like urinary tests and all that stuff, blood work. Yeah. At, um, yeah the I think door. As well, if you are a house, oh, <laughs> shout out to the door. Uh, if you're like a house that's youth from 16 to 24, I believe you can get tested. Nice. Yeah, that's great. For everything for free. No insurance needed. 555 Broom Street. Oh, yeah. Talk, yeah, talk, talk, talk. 555 Broom Street. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, you don't see you don't see all that stuff around like uh, yeah. With the but bands. we still need it. That's the thing. Yeah. We still need it. They just took it away for like no reason. I mean, funding ran out or whatever. But um, you know, if the government really put a priority on this, they would find more funding. You know, like I would much rather we had free rapid tests for everybody than all the money they give to the cops. <laughs> you know, like how many? How like just the number of cops who follow us around on Thursdays? Their pay. <laughs> You could buy hundreds and hundreds of rapid tests yeah. with that money. <laughs> like, yeah. And, you know, high could quality masks, all that stuff. So the amount of money they come from schools, yeah. from equipment, from yeah. libraries, from MTA funding because the air quality there is fucking terrible. Yeah. yeah. That's, That's right. another reason to wear a mask, actually. There was just a scientific paper that came mm -hmm. out. From Columbia. Like, yeah, looking at air quality in the subway. And it's horrible. So <laughs> uh, it helps with, you know, this helps with pollution as a, in addition to the disease aspect. I think in the last episode, um, I think Sean was telling us that they started in Metro North, already started uh, telling people they can't have masks. Really? Yeah, oh. a mask ban in Metro North. Yeah. Well, that would be, I, ride, I ride Metro North all the time because my family lives in Connecticut, so. Yeah, <laughs> get ready. Yeah. Yeah, any problems, I'm coming too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I actually, so Nassau County was like, is like one of these places that has a mask ban as of a few weeks ago. And I was actually there with a couple of family members like in August and we were riding the train with our N95s. And it was, it was all right. I actually saw a couple other people in a mask. With a mask on, Which yeah. made me feel more comfortable. Because I was like, yeah, it's like what I'm saying. If it's safety and numbers kind of thing. If you have a few people doing it, you know, maybe it'll be less likely to be targeted or singled out by the cops. Mm. But... Yeah, I think it's just crazy how they flip-flop shit like that, man. Yeah. yeah. I, my whole thing is, like, the mandation of yeah. anything. Yeah. Why are you forcing anyone... That goes to abortion... You yeah. know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Why are you forcing anyone to do anything with their body? Yeah. As long as it's not affecting anyone else. And I understand the mass, like, the need for it. Yeah. You know, because that's like protecting, holding in your nasty bodily yeah. fluids. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? To yeah. not cough or sneeze on anybody else. But, like, forcing anything is just like, bro. Yeah. We learned that don't work. So it's true. Like, let's yeah. not... Let's yeah, I mean, that. I think it's better to, like, explain to people and sort of Educate. understand. Yeah. 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 Um, Especially like periods like now where there's a lot of the disease going around, you know, it's it's helpful to know why it's help, like why it works. And there has been a ton of scientific research at this point showing that they do help, especially if you mm -hmm. have the higher quality mask. Like what I'm wearing now is a KN95, um, so it's like a higher quality than a surgical mask um, because there's more layers of filtration happening. Mm. Yeah. That's where we. Um I got a couple of those at the house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's good to have. Yeah, it's like good quality. How long do you, how many times do you wear your mask before you uh, throw them away? Um, it's a good question. I feel like I, I, I have a bunch in rotation. I have like a spot in my apartment where they're all like hung up on hooks. And so I'll wear the same one maybe like five to 10 times. It depends. Like, if I wear a mask in a marsh or something and it gets really sweaty, I might, like, throw it right yeah. out. Um, but I usually will open a new one. Like, if I'm traveling, I'll open a new N95 um, just to have, like, a fresh one uh, and stuff like that. So, generally, I mean, I think there's – there. It, it depends on both, like, how much you're using it. Like, if I'm wearing one – at an event for like many hours at a time like that might be it for that mask mm -hmm. but if you're wearing it like on the train one week and then on the train another week um you might you know you you, you might get a few weeks out of that there are also reusable ones like the one i was mentioning that i wear at the airport that's like a reusable mask that i can yeah. use for years 
Yo. Um, so there's different options out there. I remember yeah, when I was at City Hall, I had about like three or four of them. I just keep, I just keep yeah. switching, depending yeah. on if we got sweaty or not. Yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you also have the washable ones, too, with a little filter on it. Mm -hmm. Those are rare, but I've seen those. Yeah. The washable filter. Though. Yeah. yeah. It's useful. They had... I I had what I could, all right, so I told you I caught it, and I was boom, and I had it real, real bad. And at that time, they were saying if you caught it, you couldn't catch it again. And that's what I told people. That's when I came. Yeah. Like, I mean, at the time, that's what we thought, yeah. right? Like, that's that's what people thought for a while. Um, but I think it was really, like, 2021 when the virus started to mutate and there were like new variants i think that was when there was more of a realization among scientists and health people that like oh no like you can't actually catch it again yeah um, no, i know people call it yeah. a couple times yeah um but the vaccines help with that too like they just the fda just approved the updated vaccines for this fall um so folks can go out and get them now get your flu shot too like all of this all of this helps I haven't had a flu shot in a long time. I got scared yeah. of the flu shot. Oh, no, man. It's, it's helpful. <laughs> oh, man, that flu shot tore me up one time. Oh, yeah. yeah. They had it at my job, and I got oh, yeah. it. And, oh, man, it took me out. I said, oh, I want to take a flu shot yeah. before. And that was back in, uh, I used to get it every year, too, yeah. until that bad experience. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Damn, that does just remind me. I should probably get mine, too. Like, yeah. Like, fucking um, uh, context for this. Um. Like back in like the first two and a half weeks of May, um, I along with Gail, um, we were both in Ireland at the time, and um, mm -hmm. long story. I went to she, Ireland. Oh yeah, shit. this year. Shout out to uh, Gail. Yeah, um, yeah. She's, also, she's, she's there right, right now. now too, That's so. why oh, she's shit. not here. Yeah. Great, Gail. Yeah. Is it mate? We got some okay. mic problems real quick. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Technical difficulties. Talk. Yeah. Talk. <laughs> there we go. Mm -hmm. All right. Talk. Uh, yeah, so um, we were both in Ireland. Um, I think we were in Galway, about to go to go um, up to Northern Ireland. Um, long story short, she caught the flu, and then a day later, I ended up feeling sick. No. Um, I did not confirm if I had the flu or not, but um, <laughs> needless to say, I was fucking. I, I don't want to say I was miserable for the pa for the next like three to five days, but I, I yes. definitely was not, it it definitely was not fun. Yeah. 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 I was like, yeah, you know, this is a wake up call for me. Yo, yeah. Oh, That's man. the thing. Also, like so many people are like, oh, COVID is just like the flu. And they they no. use that phrase to say, like, it's no big deal. The flu is also bad. Yeah. Like thousands <laughs> of people are hospitalized every year from the flu. Yeah, the flu in bad years, you have, you know, 10,000 plus people die in the US from the yeah. flu. Like. <laughs> None, yeah. none of this is great, you know, and like wearing masks and staying home if you're not feeling well and like all of this stuff, you know, if it were if it were more of a widespread thing that we all did, uh, it would help have less sickness just like in general. It's definitely. Yeah, it's, um, it's definitely you can feel the difference, too. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Yeah, definitely. It is. I mean, yeah, you know, both of them shits are serious, but you can tell the difference in, in yeah. between them, but they both nothing that you want to yeah. play with. Yeah, I mean, oh. <laughs> COVID, is, COVID is more likely to have, like, long-term implications mm -hmm. and stuff. But it can happen with the flu as well. So. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's get into some, oh, let's get into some, um, some activism. Oh, yeah. Talk yeah. some more activism. Well, um, I, I should say y'all, y'all are part of a lot of, um, talk to, uh, tell the people also, I mean, they already know about, you know, me and Dom's, so, uh, they know about um, Reject Eric Adams. And Stonewall was a riot. Yeah. Um, but tell them the other actions that y'all include in. So, or that y'all are, like, you know, part of, I mean, like, already you know, like, the, yeah. Like, defense. like, you about to do tomorrow? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So, Rude Mechanical Orchestra, like I said, the band has been around since 2004. I've been a member for the last, like, five years or so. So, I, I still feel, like, relatively new compared to some of the real veterans in the group. But... We'll support like a huge wide variety of actions. Um, so like climate stuff, um, like anti-police, like we reject Eric Adams, of course, um, abortion rights stuff. Uh, so like tomorrow, for example, the band is gonna be out at the monthly clinic defense, um, which is organized by New York City for abortion rights. 
Um, it's this like regular counter protest that happens because the first Saturday of every month, there's a religious group uh, from a church in lower Manhattan that like every month they go to this Planned Parenthood. Um, it's like one of the main, I think one of the main abortion clinics in New York City. And they go there and for an hour, they like try to pray for baby, you know, whatever. Yes. Um, the it's, it's, away. Yeah. Um, and, so, you know, it's, it's pretty horrible. It's, it's like shitty to see that this happens in even in New York City, which we think of as a very liberal place, but it does. And so New York City for abortion rights will go out and their goal is really to like drown out and sort of cover up these anti-abortion um, people. And so they will have like rainbow umbrellas to like cover them. And as a band, we go and we try to play music to drown out their praying. Um, so when we're successful and we have like a big band and we're like well coordinated, like you can't hear them. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's really nice. So hopefully we'll have that uh, tomorrow. Um, so that's just like one example. Obviously, we're out at a lot of the Palestine rallies. Um, I would like a couple of us were at the Within Our Lifetime March on Monday. Um, I don't know, Jason, what else, what else have we been at recently? Um, recently? Yeah. Um, I, I'm not sure if I can answer that, given the fact that I feel like I've barely been around for a lot of stuff oh. nowadays because of my work schedule. Yeah, no, that's true. Um, I guess late summer is also sometimes a slow period because yeah. it's, um, like, I too do, hot to... Um, I do know that um, we are going to be tabling at the Anarchist Book Fair uh, we go. coming up. Yeah. Oh, you're going to be tabling? Okay. Yeah. Mm. At what, what book fair? Anarchist the Anarchist Book Fair. Book fair. Mm. Yeah. Um, what else? Oh, like community garden stuff mm. or like community organizations sometimes will go out and support. Um, yeah, pride right stuff. Um, yeah, like we'll play at the Queer Liberation March usually. Um, yeah. This year we collaborated with SWAR, which was great. Yeah. Um, Yo, y'all really threw yeah, down for uh, real. Yeah. I guess that, that was, was the amazing. stuff we do with um, MDC Solidarity. Oh, yeah. MDC. Yeah. Um, MDC is a uh, jail in Brooklyn. Um, MDC, and there is a group. Uh, basically, they've been protesting for a few years now in honor of Jamel Floyd, who was killed at the jail, I think, in 2020. Um, Jamel Floyd, I, I heard his name. Is it in 2020? I think it was 2020. It's like it's been a couple of years that they've been doing this. Um, but every September, they go out and have a noise demo on his birthday, which is September oh. 15th. So that's coming oh. out in a couple. That's coming in a couple of weeks. We'll be that's playing what I'm at about that. To say. That's right. Um, um, yeah. That's probably where I heard his name. I think I heard you guys tell me that before when I was doing it last yeah. year or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So every every year, um, oh, we're gonna be at Honk, which is a festival of like radical marching bands and protest bands, um, and some less radical bands, but yeah. <laughs> it's a good time. Uh, it's like a festival that happens in Boston in October. Um, so some of us will be traveling to that. Um, yeah, I don't know. We're always busy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's <laughs> always a lot of, oh, like a lot of union stuff too. We always try and play at picket lines, or like tenant stuff, just like yeah. any kind of action, really, any kind of political action. You can invite us. We're looking for new members too. So if you play an instrument, or if you don't play an instrument, but you like think it would be fun to learn an instrument. <laughs> yeah. um, there's no, there's no like musical barrier to entry. I, it, I say it's more of like a political barrier to entry. Yeah, I, take, take it from me. I, yeah. I, I learned playing, I learned how to play a snare drum while in the band for like, at, and I was in the band for like, what? Um, what, uh, June? A few months. Yeah, but yeah. about three months, I think. Yeah. Shit. So Jason is good evidence. So you can pick up an instrument. I, I, all right. I always thought about it. So last year, um, <laughs> Shay yeah. found me this when, when she was walking oh, home. Oh, the drum? It's nice, yeah, nice. It's a um, I think it's a snare drum. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm gonna show y'all it, but yeah, you should come out. I just want to donate it. Yeah. Donate. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, that's yeah. Fair. yeah. It's not yeah. A donated. Right. I mean, if y'all yeah. teach me how to play, it, then that's cool too. Oh, really? How much drums? Yeah. yeah. Wait, do y'all only do percussion instruments, or is it no, an no? It's a full band. No, because I, I got a guitar from We the People. It was oh. one of the donations. Remember, yeah. I had, brrr, <laughs> shout out to me, the people. Yeah, I got a guitar, so I yeah. do want to learn how to play that guitar. So yeah, I would say guitar is tough because you need like an amp and stuff right. generally. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can't really march. You can't really march with a guitar, but any uh, like band instrument. I, yeah. I, I mean, in, I mean, in fairness, we we do, we do. I mean, in fairness, do have an on again, off again violin player. That's true. Our, we do team. have it, but Is he a violin like, player. Yes. He like carries an amp. So you can hear oh, him better. You can put an amp to a violin. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. never knew that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's cool. What, what, 
What days do y'all practice on? Tuesdays. What time? It's like 7 to 9 in Dumbo. All right, look. <laughs> yeah. You gonna come? I'm about to try. Yeah, right. I'm about to bring yeah. my drum. I'm about to bring my drum. Oh my god. Yo, because yeah. that'll be fire because then I can show solidarity at other people's marches by doing yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the whole thing. I would love to do that. All right, so yeah, oh uh, that's it. Brand new. Brand new news right now. <laughs> Brand new rally. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm coming, I'm coming. All right, so I'm gonna come Tuesday. Yeah. And I'm gonna bring I'm gonna bring that drum and yeah. yeah. Message me, see. I'll give you the location yeah. and everything. I'm gonna try yeah. I'm gonna try I'm gonna try to come like two times. And yeah. if I got it, then I'm gonna be there every week. Yeah. If I yeah. don't, then I'm just gonna donate the drum. <laughs> the other thing <laughs> really, the other thing I think you could do if you came yeah. to one of our practices is to help everybody practice chant support. Oh yeah. Because yeah. you're so good at leading chants. Yeah. Like I've been to so many marches with a drum or like with my clarinet. And you're like the best. Like I love playing with you every week. It's I mean, I'll be obviously, to go off of y'all. like obviously, <laughs> I'm consistent for other reasons too. It's important, yeah. but like it really is just like so much fun, and like like I I feel like I've learned bass drum just like playing at marches like that. And so I feel like it might be cool for the rest of the band. I mean, I'm always telling people to come out on Thursdays, obviously. Yeah. Um, but it would be fun also to have like practice that because uh, yeah. chant. Leading chance, I feel like, is uh, maybe not as easy as everybody thinks it is. I like you really, not. you really get better at it over time. Yeah, yeah over time. That's yeah. What it, and what I try to do is, I try to transition the next chant to to y'all drums. Yeah, I'm no, that's, yeah. The thing. that's the thing that so many people are not good. at. Yeah. <laughs> Some um, people just scream over the drums, not yeah. like go with yeah. the flow. You know. Yeah. Yeah, because when you keep a consistent beat for a long time, you really get a groove going, mm. and that's yeah. really nice. Yeah. Also, if you have like a big march and someone keeps like changing things up, it's hard for other people to like follow and stay with you. Oh, you know? I can't remember that one time. I remember that one time. It was so bad. Bessie, he was there. And I had to tell him, I forgot who was chat, but I was like, bro, you have to stop. <laughs> bro, you, you have, have to, to stop. stop. <laughs> you have to like stay on like a beat pattern or yeah. chanting for a little bit yeah. longer so you can pick yeah. the beat up. Yeah, no, I'm they always telling the organizers, like, right to the next chant, chant a little longer. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. That shit just like, crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like, I feel like it's counterintuitive if you're doing it because you're like oh i'm like getting bored i've done this chant a few times and it's like no actually if you've done a chant like four or five times yeah. everyone else is only just now starting to hear right. you and exactly. like understand what the yeah. chant yeah. is yeah like like i'm every time that has ever happened where it's just like it, it's not consistent in the chanting it's like I always just think in my head, it's like, God, for the love of God, just please. Yeah. <laughs> please, just give me a, yeah. just give me a, just give me a full bar. Yeah. Like, give me a yeah. Yeah. It's tough sometimes as a drummer, especially if it's like an organizer I don't know very well, because I don't want to be like telling them what to do. But also I'm like, it's like hurting the energy of your action yeah. if you're like not keeping up a good sort of chant yeah. rhythm. So yeah. striking a balance definitely between like being respectful and like following what they're doing, I think. Is also weird. like make sure the message gets across. Yeah, exactly. Like exactly. you want people to know what you're saying and like have something yeah. stick with them. You know, if you create something that's like catchy and like to the yeah. point, people yeah. will remember that when they go Like home. fuck the mayor. Like everybody yeah. gets what we're yeah, doing yeah, immediately. Yeah. I try to like do some chants in between and then keep bringing it back to me. Yep. We yeah. are very good them. So. Yeah. Like don't forget. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the other thing too is um like going to um yeah of, of not letting the chant drag all the way out because I also um that that chant was doing like the one we are the people too yeah like that used to be my favorite joint and I used to say it only like four times and I cut it off and y'all yeah. got a whole different switch up to the beat if you keep saying it and that was like <laughs> yeah, I went to a, a different march That's and true. like they kept doing it and then I seen it, I was like oh shit. I'm like, oh, I don't say it long enough for them to even get to that part. <laughs> <laughs> so that, yeah. Like, yeah. I feel like since we go to your marshes so regularly, we have, like, beats that we regularly do for the different yeah. chants. So it's very consistent. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 One of my favorite chants that Rude Mechanical Orchestra ever, like, well, like, beats, X chants, you know, X swar that we ever created was the cops are in the street. Mm. Oh yeah. yeah. I love that, that one. We need to record that. Yeah, like we well. need to go <laughs> to a studio or something and put that on a beat because that is too fire. Yeah. Like just play it every protest. Yeah. So we just sit there and look at them like Yeah. We ain't it's tired really calls time. attention. Yeah. Replay. It's, 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 I always play this song too. Um you guys 
gave me this song on the bridge. Oh, the uh, who called the police? Who called the police? That's so good. Yeah, I play that. I play that in the shower. I play it at, <laughs> at the distro. I play. Uh, yeah. I said it, it's so crazy, man. And I hate saying it, but I'll be like, yo, when, uh, yo, if I when I die, I want them to play that at my funeral. Like, that's the song. <laughs> I want them to march my grave out to like that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. That yeah, I like that song. Um, yeah. Yeah, we also there's a we play which side are you on a lot, oh, I and I recently song. found I yeah. recently found this like really good cover of it. I'll send it to you, but it's, it's yeah, yeah. That's what I gotta talk to y'all and get some chance, man. Cause I, I back in, in, in like 2021, 2022, I feel like we had so many more chance. It's like so many. Yeah, I take my little breaks, yeah. I come back, and all these like I can't remember like you <laughs> see. Yeah, yeah. I remember. Um, write them down, record them. I used to love uh, um. One of Queen Jean marches too. Like oh, I yeah, feel like yeah. she could carry the like the uh like you know, with the chance and all mm -hmm. that. Like Yeah. Of of the pattern and all that. Actually on the Rube Mechanical Orchestra website there's like a huge list of chants. Yeah. 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 I don't know how recently it's been updated. Uh, yeah, um, I cannot attest I don't that. know. Um but there's a bunch of like older stuff on there. So yeah, I'm gonna go look good at resource. Those. And also, I like I like the fact that like like we just be making chants up on the fly. For real, yeah. <laughs> we turn anything into like a chant. <laughs> yeah. And y'all be catching right on to the beat, like when the cops pulled up yesterday to the protest, and we was like, we got shit to do. <laughs> we chanted, like, we got shit to do. That was so good. Yeah. I mean, yesterday was great. I appreciated that we were able to evade the cops and like pull up at Gracie Mansion when no one yeah, was there. Yeah, that was. Oh, that was we got time. the world premiere. All right, boom, yeah, fire. Yo, yeah. Uh, Steph, can you pull it up so we can hear it too? Um, it's uh, I think it's a Chucky Chucky video from last night. Did it say Chucky too? Wait, it should be it should be in the doc. Yeah, um, uh, parade. Who is this? Uh, protest. All right, this is the premiere. Um, it actually premiered while we was on the. On the, uh, on the podcast while we record. It's a, it's a YouTube joint, right? I think Rosa said she put it in there. I've seen it too. All right. Oh, shit. But if I send it to you on my phone, will you be able to do it? Sound Greco? Not nah, a Sal Greco. That's something we got to get into, though. Uh, maybe the Sal Greco. I, well, I, got, I got it. You got it? Yeah, all right, just last night. Oh, nice. Nice. Oh, we, oh, we can't hear the volume. Do you got volume? Yeah. Oh, you probably hear from that side. Mm -hmm. I gotta protect myself. It gets spooky like that, bro. Last year they flew a helicopter to my house. To make sure I got inside. I didn't have no warrants, I didn't have nothing. Just to make sure I got in the house. Defending the, the, the dirty mayor. Failed to properly 
illegally safeguard prisoner. You forfeited 20 vacation days. That's crazy. This guy looks like he beats his wife. He probably beats his wife. The biggest waste of tax dollars, NYPD. Our tax dollars go to these people doing nothing, doing their job. No, they do nothing. No, you're useless. I can protect myself. We protect us. We ended up getting up out of there, Gracie Mansion. Now we're marching back on the street. Still have my other one. It, um, it was those Hi, Mark Barnett. Um, I got it. Uh, one of my things was like delivery guy, but he had some problems like that. Yeah, he came yeah. Back. yeah, yeah. So it was dope. Shout out to delivery uh, guy. He actually started fucking around with the cops and shit. Like, oh, oh my god. Us. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was dope. But um. People see it. They see it. Yeah, it was the, it was the um, catching them off guard, and that was the best part of it. It's, it's uh, and it, that happened by accident. You know, um, I threw uh, we threw the threw the march at the Amplified Theater. The Amplified Theater had a concert there. <laughs> so it was bad people down there. It was bad cops. So we, when we get off the train and I'm coming around to go to the theater. I see like the cop cars and I see like a couple of cops and they ain't turned around to see me yet. So I'm like, oh, I'm not going in that way. Let's go from the top. So I get from the top, I'm seeing a couple of protesters and I'm like, all right. And we get up to the top and we see that it's packed. So I just immediately put in my story, like to meet us at the basketball court <laughs> and got everybody over there. And then never sent, they didn't know where he's at. So they still waiting in the theater <laughs> while we slid off. <laughs> 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 and went to the other side of town and then started turning up. Yeah. So then from there, they got the, you know, the regular cops they can't, they not, they're not trained. And then uh, the people that's actually calling the cops, you know how long it takes for the cops to come? You know what I mean? We're already down somewhere else. Um, and then they got to have the right personnel to, to come out and do something. I know, like, boom, they, you have to give us all warnings. Um, it's organized, it's something. So you have to go through all the procedures before you just make a stupid move or arresting us. And the cops that don't know about the demonstration or something, or don't, because they wouldn't, we got the same cops at each demonstration yeah. because they're trained to deal with us. Yeah. So when the ones that's not trained to deal with us, they don't know what the hell to do. So they just rather sit back and let us do whatever. As long <laughs> as we're not tearing shit up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they followed us all the way. It was like two cars following us. And then when we got like right by the train station, we got on the sidewalk. Then they sent the cavalry. Like, the, you know what I mean? The rest of the stuff. <laughs> but when we walked off again, it was only they sent those two cars. So it was like, and that's, that's, that's how, and that's how we got to do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's how you take the streets. And at the same time, we don't need the cops there. It's all about making an impact. Eric Adams know we came last night. Yeah. Somebody's going to be in trouble about us coming last night. And nobody, like, you know what I mean, is posted. Um, I really feel, believe that they were up at uh, Jesse Lance's house. <laughs> I <laughs> mean, the yeah. Last time oh, yeah. Like the last time. Year, yeah. They didn't send no cops, but we got to Jesse Lance's house. They was there. Yeah. Yesterday, I'm thinking they sent the people to Jesse Land's house, and we went to we went to Gracie Mansion, and we got there. Um, we came up, you know, me and Chanting, but Dom, the, the gate was wide open for us to walk yeah. all the way up to the house. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah we, could have ran I, down. I, like, I and just that, the one guy who had no guy. idea what to do. Yeah, and he took off running. I took off oh. running towards him. He tried yeah. to grab the gates, and that's why we started fucking with yeah. the gates. But we could have easily moved those gates and went past them. Yeah. And then um, a couple of the protesters went around the gates and was on the other side behind them. Like, and he just like just sitting there calling for backup. <laughs> so it was like, yeah. it was like, yo, bro, they they let people walk up there. Yeah, I didn't know that. Like, they, we saw so many people while we were sitting on the other side of the gate. It was people coming from there with dogs and stuff, just walking up there. And I'm like, I really wonder also what people, because we saw people coming out of Gracie Mansion. I'm like, what yeah. were they doing? Like, what, what doing is going there? on in there? Are they having like fundraisers or a little meeting? Yeah, I don't know. Press conference. All I know is I always yeah, thought that that nobody could like get up in there and just see that it was open like that till seven o'clock at night. And if we probably would have just walked, he wouldn't even like you know what I mean. No, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, the light bulb in my head is ding 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 ding. So I'm yeah. thinking <laughs> 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 it's lit. I just got to figure out how to do it. 
Yeah. And the thing is, y'all watching this shit, there's nothing y'all can do to stop it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, all right. So, all right. So now we get into the topics, Little the regular dry. topics of uh, yeah. the weekly. Oh, before we get into those topics, is there anything else y'all want to touch on? Uh, any we, projects y'all want to plug? Anything, yeah. Oh, I would just say, like, if you're interested in learning more about, you know, following COVID, long COVID, um, you can follow the Sick Times on social media. We have Twitter, Instagram, Blue Sky. Um, I think we are on Facebook now, too. Our social media editor, Heather, has been doing a lot. Um, and we have a newsletter. So every week you get, like, the news stories. I write these COVID updates every week to, you know, keep everybody, uh, give everybody a sense of what's going on. Um, and I mean, in terms of like the two roles that I have, I, I see a lot of parallels between them. Like as a journalist, it's all about getting information out there, supporting people. And it's, I, I see it as similar to my role, like as a drummer at protests in terms of like, I'm not the person who's like actually doing the advocacy, right. But I'm, I'm trying to support that. I'm trying to get the information to people who need the information. Um, and just like amplify what's going on. Cause there's a lot of great advocacy going on in the long COVID community. A lot of people, you know, pushing for funding, pushing for research to happen and all of this stuff. And so like trying to amplify that and trying to help people find each other, I think is a big, a big part of the work. So. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's the most, uh, I, the most important part of the work, especially, uh, and what we do. Um, and that's part of that's, that's your job. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, one is like actually my job and the other is more of like, uh, I don't know, community organizing kind of thing. Yeah. But they're very, I see them as very similar roles. Oh, absolutely. Especially spreading awareness because that's what we, you know what I mean? That's, yeah. Spreading awareness. That's, that's exactly what we yeah. out here to do is to wake people up and, uh, keep them informed about what's going on. And, um, yeah. And it's like, yeah, if you don't trust the government on, like, Palestine, why do you trust the government on COVID? Yeah. Like, like, think about it. <laughs> Talk heavy. <laughs> Talk <for real>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. It's They're lying lot. to you about all kinds of shit. Yeah. So, yeah. All the time, and especially here in New York City. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah. All right, so. Oh, Jason? Any plugs? Anything? Uh, no. Uh, no, uh, no, no, no plugs for me, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> Um, if if I actually had the foresight to you know actually not uh, uh, not procrastinate on finally making a band or something, I'd probably fuck <laughs> that. But you know, yeah. um, but you know, maybe next time. And yeah. by next time, I probably still will have not have um, formed the band. Yeah, so. you will. That's okay. Hey, yeah. so next we'll time we're gonna we going hopefully we'll right. see we'll after after my. Oh, yeah. You show us your. I mean, sure. I don't know how to fucking play a kit, but you know. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, me neither. One drum is all I can do at once. What's, what's that called? Uh, when it's like everything, uh, or kit, yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's you have to. What you have to? Would you have to learn like each? each what, what yeah, you have to be able to play tune. each one and yeah. also do them like at the same time. Which I'm like, yeah. I can't even chant and play at the oh, same shit. time. Sometimes, <laughs> Steph so. know how to do that. Kit. Steph, right. you be on here. Hit, 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 hit the light, Steph. Hit, hit the, the light, light Steph. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to you. Steph be doing his thing back there. For real? Yeah, I see the on. Oh, they got it. Um, open mics. I was an all city marching band. I yeah. For, uh, three times parade. I mean, let me do well. Oh, nice. Fuck oh. yeah. Shout out to you. Yeah. Oh, you're right there. Hi, shit. You want to come drum with yeah, us yeah. at the march? <laughs> 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 I'm not here, yeah. 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 The RMO has extra drums and stuff, so. Oh, shit. Come by Yo, anytime. Aluminum stairs? Because my back is, like, kind of messed up. Maybe, I, yeah. I think, or maybe, I think I might have one. Oh, yeah, okay. there's definitely a snare or two in the practice space. Oh, okay. Yeah. How long? I, all right. Oh, yeah, I know. Yo, Steph, how long did it take you to learn how to play this? Uh, drum set? I've been drumming since, mm, uh, I think, seventh grade. Oh, uh, dang. Nice. Yeah. That's when I, all right, that's the only time I, 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 I played drums. Because in seventh oh, grade, yeah. I, I, um. Like the band, the middle school band. Thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. They had me playing the little snare and I played the, uh, yeah. the bass. Yeah. Oh, uh, the Lion King. My main instrument is actually <laughs> clarinet. So that's the one I know. That's the one I've been playing since seventh grade. But drums I picked up in like 2020 going out to the marches and stuff. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, yeah, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it out. Yeah. And then when I get busy, like, you know what I mean? If I feel like I'm good, then I'm coming here. But we'll all know, like, uh, <laughs> we'll all know, like, like two Tuesdays. Yeah. Two Tuesdays. Yeah. yeah. 
Because by that second one, I'm going to be like, man, I got this. Or, man, I need to get this drum up. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's probably going to be my new hobby. Sounds yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. All right. But, the, um, yeah. All right. So the commissioner got raided. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Talk about Back it. Back to the top again to yeah. the news. The commissioner got raided. Um, the commissioner and two top. All right. Let me read this. Let me read this article. Also the uh, head of the MIPD, right? Police commissioner. Yeah. He took his phone. He took a bunch of guys' phones. Yeah, seized them. Yeah. The FBI. Yeah. Okay. The FBI. All right. Um, you know, Steph, if you could pull up, it's got this, the, the Gothamist, where it say the timeline. I think it's Eric Adams' timeline. Yeah. That's it. Let me see. I'm going to pull it up from this joint so I can read it. Let me see. And the joint. It's, um, yeah, a couple of his officials. I'm going to read the top joint. I ain't going to get into their names. But it's just got a timeline. And when you go through that timeline, it's so crazy because um, the timeline. Let me see. It said Mayor Adams' inner circle is facing multiple investigations. And then it goes into the timeline. I say, legal issues keep mountain for Mayor Eric Adams and his inner circle as it inches closer to his re-election campaign next year. The most recent development involves federal authorities raiding the homes of at least two top city hall officials early Wednesday. Um, city hall officials confirmed first Deputy Mayor Sheena Wright and Deputy Mayor for Public Safety Phil Banks were the latest administration officials visited by the FBI agents. School counselor David Banks, the brother of Phil Banks, lives with the right, lives with right at her northern Manhattan brownstone. In a brief statement Friday morning, David Banks said he was cooperating with the federal inquiry, um, but could not comment further. All right, I just want to say, all right, so we got that, but as you scroll on, it just goes into, and it got the timeline. The timeline starts from J July 7th, um, 2023. And it just goes in and, and it talks about all, you know, um, the indictments, um, the people that uh, pled guilty, um, all the FBI different ratings and the timeline, each one of these timelines, like when you go to the first one, it talks about the Manhattan DA's office indict six men. These six men are six men for directing illegal um, straw donations to Adams 2021 campaign. campaign. Now, what I want to say is all this stuff has to do with Eric Adams' campaign, all, his, his whole timeline, all these people getting locked up. Now, the raid yesterday, maybe the two top officials, the two top officials, um, the city hall officials, have to do with maybe something has to do with uh, his campaign. Um, the commissioner, they saying that's something separate. Uh, the commissioner has, um, has, has a dirty, dirty history. And this is what I tell people too. The commissioner has a dirty history. Um, and there's a reason why he's put in that position. You know what I mean? It's a reason why uh, they, all right, they had the black woman, the first black woman, then uh, she leaves because of Madjory. And like I said, now they got uh, the first Latin person to be commissioner. Eric Adams wants to cover up his moves by, I guess, break, making history. So he could yeah. say, boom, he brought on the first black, you know, woman commissioner. He could say, boom, he brought on the first Latin commissioner. But these these people are being brought up not for history, but because they are they are dirty and they're willing to play Eric Adams' dirty games. Um, they brought up uh, Tim Pearson. Have you heard about Tim Pearson? I think so, yeah. He's one of the uh, people that's um, part of this investigation, too. I think uh, his house got raided yesterday, too. Mm. Um, Tim Pearson's. You, you don't know Tim Pearson's, but you know the woman is, an, is another woman cop from the 79th Precinct. She's not the yeah. 79th Precinct no more. They moved her. But she's the one who about. filed a lawsuit against... Police yeah. misconduct. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yo, and I don't like Cosmo. This black woman, like, she, like, reminds me of my aunt or something. So I always yeah. laugh and smile when I see her. But, like, she knows, like, you know what I mean? I don't play around. But she um, she has a lawsuit against, you know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. This guy, Tim Pearson. Yeah, another officer. Tim Pearson was a former cop. He got um, his job. He he retired or 
whatever he 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 quit his job and um when he got caught up in on it was de blasio's he got caught up in de blasio's some some with de blasio's mm -hmm. um comes to comes conspiracy shit but he didn't um face hold up i got it <laughs> i don't want to give you all the fake information <laughs> Look, he um he didn't face any kind to he didn't face any kind of uh consequences or anything like his way of um, escaping discipline was to quit his job <laughs> and we see officers do that all the time yeah. mm -hmm. um, because if they could get hit with that discipline it'll mess up their pension or it could do a whole bunch of other things I don't I don't know but he he that was the route he took so in 2014 he took that route and he hasn't did anything with the you know NYPD or anything since Eric Adams got in office and brought him up um, and now this dude is in, like, he's in he's in a lot of trouble. And I think they're trying to bring, for whatever he did in 2014, I think they're going to bring that up now, too. So that's also what they're looking into. This stuff about Eric Adams' campaign, they knew about this in 2021. The reason why they are on Eric Adams' ass right now is because that election year is coming up. They are destroying this man's campaign. You know what I mean? <laughs> They could have been destroyed his man's campaign. This is why I say it's all like a dirty game. They really wanted to get Eric Adams. They would have got him back yeah. in 2021 when he's doing all this shit. Yeah. They're waiting. They probably already know what Eric Adams did and probably already know how to arrest him or do whatever the fuck they're going to do to him. But they're waiting to when the time is right to drop it on him like it's another bombshell. Literally. So like all these. Because the FBI don't investigate for no reason. They, like if the FBI yeah. is investigating you, that means they have shit on you. To, as the FBI to come out publicly saying, yeah, we're investigating you. Like, they don't just come yeah. out and say, we're on your ass, you know? Yeah. yeah. They keep it on the It seems like, from the stories I've read about this, too, it could be something different from the campaign mm -hmm. with this, like, latest round of searching people's houses and seizing phones and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, just a, a lot of corrupt of shit. shit going on, I guess. Yeah. A lot of corruption. And that's the what they same said about, circles, too. Yeah. yeah that's, and that's what they said about Eddie Caban. They said, uh, corruption. <laughs> it's <just> yeah. Corruption. <laughs> So it's like a move. But that's why I said every every last one of his people are corrupted. Yeah. Um real quick, all right, the Sal Greco. This is the other thing. And this is what I really wanted to talk about. Like at the protest, these there's a lot of sex fiends over there. But um when we get to the protest to see that, see what happened with you know what I mean? The people getting getting raided yesterday, it's just like, y'all know every time I see this shit, I'm getting like hype. Welcome back to another edition of the Sal Greco Show. And on this edition of the Sal Greco Show, we're going to take a special look, a real look, into something that people, you know, it's like the 900-pound elephant in the room. Does the Eric Adams administration and NYPD leadership have a problem with sexual deviancy? They named it a number of lawsuits, and it seems to be a pattern smear campaigns trying to quell any anybody that criticizes them or mentions anything about them we're gonna take a look at that so without any further ado let's get right into it Hold on real quick. We, yeah, hold on real, I want you to finish playing that, but wait real quick. I just wanted to give y'all the background. This is a cop. I watch these shows because these are these are cops that mm -hmm. lost their jobs and they like they are salty. Yeah. So they be dry snitching. Yeah. <laughs> dry snitching on the police. <laughs> he knows what he's talking about. We support yeah. dry snitching Yo, when it's the cops. To dry snitching cops out there. <laughs> yeah. Like, talk, cops talk that shit. With their jobs. <laughs> And dry and, snitch. Yeah. yeah, tell us all the tea. Yeah, Yo, tell us the fucking tea. Yeah. Listen, 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 cops, quit your job, dry snitch. You know what I mean? <laughs> tell them cops. <laughs> yeah, they had yeah, their yeah, wild it out. You have nothing to lose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. your dignity is you already work, You have the worst destroyed. job. Like pride yeah. has been ripped yeah. from you. And that's that's the only way. Like the people who like you know what I mean. Or at least, like give you some kind of decency. Yeah. Like say like what's up to you or something, man. Like you got to you got to come out and redeem yourself. Snitch yeah. on these dirty cops. All right, but yeah, this is uh, the only thing about this. These people are they 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 are corrupted too. Like when you when you actually look into him, like we just look into Sal Greco, he's like super dirty too. Uh, but that's what I said. Like the dirty ones, we talk on each other. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They be thinking it's blood in, blood out, but shit, 
to push you out and smear your ass. Well, good. Uh, all right, press play. The NYPD, especially under the Eric Adams administration, has been, you know, full of, I don't know if you want to call it scandals, scrutiny, but it's definitely far, far fall from grace from where this great organization once uh, stood. But okay. <laughs> there's something that is glaring people in the face. Many top officials, we'll just name a few. We have the chief of department, Jeffrey Madry. We have the chief of patrol, John Shell, hmm. And the NYPD deputy, deputy commissioner of operations, Kaz Daudry. All three have been recently named in sexual harassment lawsuits. Also, Jeffrey Madry and Kaz Daudry in particular also have a history of being involved in the sexual harassment lawsuits. They were in one prior. And we, you know, I could tell you this from history, Kaz Daudry used to be the driver to Jeffrey Madry as he rose through the ranks. So the lawsuits that they're involved in now are troubling. Also, we have Timothy Pearson, who's the right-hand man of Eric Adams. He's the now deputy mayor of the deputy mayor of public safety, which is Philip Banks, an unindicted co-conspirator, and some made-up office where they were running like a shadowy oversight of agencies, but the NYPD was somehow involved in... All right, now he said it's like a made up office position. There's a couple of people in there that got a couple of made up office positions. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, Kaz Daltry, that's a made up office position. Whatever <laughs> position that that is, that's made up. I want to know who had that position. He just got that position last year and he got that position after he caught lawsuits for the George Nilly protests. Mm. You know what I mean? Slam yeah. one of our comrades on their face. That's all. You know what I mean? Um, and. He, uh, I think he had did something to one of them cop watch dudes and it was somebody else but it was three lawsuits from jordan nearly um once that once they hit the like the news and the papers and all that type of stuff and then they started putting up his like his how you got how many allegations and stuff he had boom he, he's going from there now he's a regular civilian that his job is supposed to be a regular civilian but we still see him like walking around just like a cop you yeah. know what i mean with his gun on him and and, and uh it was just last month Somebody got a video of him, and they were talking trash to him. He was like, I'm a civilian, just like you guys now. Just like you guys. I'm a civilian. But he had his gun on his hip. You're <laughs> not supposed to do if you're a civilian. Yeah. 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 And so it's like, that's when he's like, oh. Make it make sense. Yeah. So yeah. we started going in on him. But, um, yeah, I think that that's a made-up position. I want to see who had that position before he got it. Who did, who, who did he relieve of that position? You know yeah. what I mean? Because of... Uh, all of a sudden, he's just now he's standing right next to the mayor. He he's not a cop no more, but he gets to be on TV as a cop and all that other stuff. It was just like a way of dodging punishment, dodging discipline. He just dodged discipline. You know what I mean? So I guess it won't mess up his pension or nothing else. He just dodged it, but he still he still got his role basically, like as walking around as a, as a top high cop, uh, top official as a cop. You know, so um. This is administration. <laughs> this is administration. <laughs> yeah. And as they all the sex fiends, all of them. Um, Eric Adams got a sexual assault in '93, and what, what what I mainly wanted to show this for is because he says anybody who talks or, or all his cabinet members, they all got like sexual assault, and Eric Adams covers them, smears them, or don't want to talk about them. He actually the guy uh, Tim Pearson. He actually came to his defense saying that, you know what I mean, he's a good guy and all this stuff, like, you know what I mean, like, basically trying to say that the person who got the sexual assault is, is, is a liar, and that's another cop that's still on the force. <laughs> we just seen her at the Palestinians, you know what I mean? So it's, it's uh, this is all funky. And we got a man, and, and Sal Greco is a cop, and as I said, like, I watch, I watch these shows just to get the dirt from, from, from the dirty cops. <laughs> they tell on each other. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Oh, all right, and then, all right, and just to wrap it up, uh, 
wanted to talk about what happened on Labor Day. Talk Juve. Yeah. Juve. Yeah, so for those of y'all, I mean, I don't, I don't know if you want to get into it first, really. The little oh, no, we, um, should we start with the celebration or the drama? I think we should start with the celebration. The fun. <laughs> okay, all right. Fun yeah. little, you know, Yo, a little yeah. lighthearted yeah. addition well, it, to the story. Yeah. But yeah. The whole day was fun. It was really turned up. I invited everybody outside to celebrate once again. Last year we went together as a group, but we also went outside for Juve. This year at the Parkway, the Eastern Parkway, we um we was outside at first. Vibes, vibes, good food, smelling in the air. Like you can see all the like exotic Caribbean fruits outside and all the um oh different. My God. It was it was really fire. So oh yeah, it was no. nice to be out there with yeah, the other Trinidadians, other Caribbeans, other flags outside. But um, we ended up seeing a whole bunch of of uh, capitalistic political endorsements. We saw a whole bunch That's of that at first. We saw a Ka- Kathy Hochul um, boat. Oh, no, no Kathy, Kathy Hochul. Yeah. Like, she was nowhere no to be found. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, you got your boat up in here, ma- delaying the rest of the parade. Okay, cool. You know what I'm saying? We saw a couple Eric Adams floats. A couple. And then we ended up seeing bitch-ass Eric Adams. Yeah. We saw Man, Erica so. out there. Yeah, yeah, she had the audacity to show her face. You know, it was really Ooh, crazy. Yeah. Erica. Oh, yeah, Erica. <laughs> <laughs> we reject! But he was out there also, speaking of um, Eddie Kuban, Eddie Kuban, he was out there too. We had to turn yeah. up on him a little bit. No, right. yeah, um, that is, 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 is trash, it's trash. Put Ooh. the, uh, put the, Eddie, put the, Eddie, which one is that one? Is that Eddie? Put the Eddie up. This shit is why I feel like you can't have no. we re- your protest because this is what happens. Like Jeez. the cops just invite parading. themselves. Yeah. Like, but it was Eric, like it gave the, an Eric celebration. No, it really did for like the, five minutes. No. We reject. Yeah. Fuck you, nigga. Oh, Fuck you, nigga. Yeah. You Fuck, you Fuck you, bitch ass nigga. Fuck you. Fuck Eric Adams. Fuck Eric Adams. Fuck Eric Adams. Like, is he even Fuck that right? nigga. He don't get nothing. Bitch ass nigga. Fuck that nigga. I think he might be Jamaican. Shoot, I know he's not Trini. I think he might be Jamaican. All right. So also John Shell, John Shell and, and Kaz Daughtry was was in there and we missed them. They was? They was there too? Bro, they were right there. They were right there walking with I'm gonna show you later, but yo, they were walking right in front of him, bro. Wow. But the thing was I seen I seen Eric Adams and I just locked in and wouldn't take my eyes off of him. But they, like Kaz and them was walking right with him. And before that, if you show uh show 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 um Eddie Eddie Kibai. Yeah, we saw him the other first. Video. His bitch. Oh, he did it. If y'all ever look at him, he points at he points at us too. Mm-hmm. We were screaming at him. Oh, 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 look at the commissioner! Look at that crook! Look at the thief! That's the thief! The commissioner's a thief! The commissioner's a thief! The commissioner's a thief! Alright, so let me tell y'all. Alright, this is where it gets a little um into my little conspiracy theory and stuff like that. Mm. I, told, <laughs> dun, dun, dun. I believe it though, bro. Until like until I see a motive or something, then we're gonna we're gonna, bro. This is where I nah. I, I hope it. I hope it's not. You know what I mean? I hope I do find a motive. Or I hope I find out what that guy looked like. Um, the guy who got. But all right. So during the during the um parade, as y'all can see, that was us right there in the spot. Um. Usually, Eastern Parkway is flooded. It's packed. Well, uh, you know what I mean? You barely move. A lot of people on both sides. The, um, the street is packed with all the people that's coming down on the floats. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, the the the, outs, the whole street is packed. You know what I mean? You barely move. You're, you're walking shoulder through. Like, it's, it's like, you know what I mean? It's like a big-ass festival where everybody's jam-packed. It's hard to move, you know? And um, a lot of pushing and shoving. It's a lot of, but it's, 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 it's fun. It's it's, it's it's joyful for to be out there, but um, we got out there before anybody, before it got packed like that. When we was out there, it was just a couple of vendors. I mean, the vendors, all of them was out there uh, giving out food, and it was space where you could walk around and do whatever. I could spin around. I could run back and forth. I could have did anything. It wasn't no, no, it was just vendors out there, and they had a couple of people walking. The majority of the people that, that come 
up there in Flood Eastern Parkway were with the parade. You know what I mean? Walking the parade up. And then it just floods that whole section when they when they, when the main parade comes up. So wherever the parade starts at, that's where everybody, that's where the majority of us at. And they walk it all the way down to Eastern Parkway and it stops mm -hmm. right there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not that um so they just walk it down. That's what everybody do, and that's how it fills up. Um they send the cops and stuff first. You know? So we didn't even know, um, I don't know, we went last year. I think we, we, we went last year. When we went last year, I think that by the time we got there, the floats and all that stuff was already coming down the street. So it was already packed and stuff yeah. like that. So this is our first time getting there, like, at the beginning and see, like, it, boom, how it was empty it is. And this is definitely, like, a, from the beginning to end, it's a different picture. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so while we were standing there, um, we were getting bored because we wasn't getting bored. We wanted to go to the Palestinian March, too, oh, yeah. that yeah. was going on. The all out you know, so city. Our plan was that that parade started at 11 and the Palestinians started at 12. So we figured we'll stay here. We was going to stay at the parade until like 1 o'clock, you know? Um, wait till 1 o'clock and then go to the Palestinian um, and then circle back and go back to the Labor Day. Um, all right, so we see, we stand in there, we see Eric Adams and all that stuff, and then they come down. Now, right after they come down, I think it was probably like 10, 15 minutes after that, we left. While we were on the train, exactly where we are standing at, get shot up. Five people get hit. All right, and what I say is, uh, I, I don't know if I put the videos in there. But all right, so one of the people, I, I had a drink in my hand, and the, the, one of the guys that I, um, that I got my drink off of was one of the people that got shot. Um, I seen it all on the news and everything like that. And um, I don't know, I, th I think it was just like, like, like weird to me that there's no motives and I never seen, I haven't seen a black person ever before just do a mass shooting without it being no kind of motive or anything like that. Um, I didn't see uh, what they said. They had no kind of, the description could have been anybody. Like I said, it'll never be, I don't think they'll ever look for this person. It was very vague. Um, and I can say like, boom, boom, all oh, that was for me. But even if it wasn't for me, that was a setup for them to shut that shit down where they don't want that shit to go on no more. They don't want that. They don't like that festival. I think they always say it's something crazy at that festival. They always say shooting or Every something year, goes down. It's it like just more reason to put more and more cops out there, though. Yeah. Where we were standing at was at the end of the march. Another block up is where all the cops were at. I don't know how that dude got out of there. He's <laughs> so many it's cops, Cops too. in yeah. every yeah. block. Every yeah. block. Every at the corner. front and at the end of every street. Yeah. I don't know. I live, like, not far from Eastern Parkway, kind of further east, and the cops were still there, like, for another, you know, they didn't take all the... They had barricades up along Eastern Parkway for, like, a week beforehand. And I bet they're still not down. It's just like it's so like such a huge security presence. And then yeah. still they, I don't know. I heard all the metal. They, they talk about the metals. That, but I didn't, I didn't end up walking past no metal. They said they was going to have metal detectors at every checkpoint. They, they did like, this big ass blowout on, on the news about what they was going to do. Yeah. And uh, the, the cop, they, they, I saw the presence. So that's why I'm like, well, how did he get out of here? <laughs> how yeah. did he get off this block? Uh, how y'all don't have no description or no nothing? Like, how does it, like, y'all just say, like, you know what I mean? Um, uh, John Shell was the one who did a black male in his 20s. He had a brown shirt on with paint on his face. Hmm. Thank you for that description. <laughs> <laughs> that's like everybody. That's Thank seven, you for yeah. describing yeah. half the 7, people. 7,000 people. Yeah, I was going to say, that describes 80% of the people. Yeah. yeah. Probably like 95, man. It was like 1,000, 7,000 some people, they said, came that yeah. flooded the Eastern Parkway. Mm. And that's, yeah. that was the... Like that was the description that we supposed to go by, Yo. or no motive for what, who, yeah. or what about the group that that? But it wasn't a group. These, these were all random bots, and that's what I'm saying. Like I see if he like shot at a certain group or something like that. Everybody was random, like yeah. and all these people didn't know each other. And one of the dudes got, the, you know, the guy that got hit in the head. But it's just like, yeah, I don't know. He shot women and everything. And I was just like, I don't, I don't. Nobody said it was an altercation, no nothing. So that's the shit that, like, I said, bro, 
I was like, that was John Shell and them all. They're like, yo, <laughs> he out there. He's going to send the killer hit. Or oh, that's them, like, shutting the parade down, man. True. Or them finding ways. Of, and they do shit like this, bro. Tried like, to. you know what I mean? But they didn't. Um, yeah, they tried to. And that's where shit gets scary. And then also, it's just like, look at what we're fighting, man. We're fighting. We're fighting. I was about the, the woman that was, that, that was at the march yesterday. Like I said, I couldn't tell whether she, side she was on. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, and I'm telling her about the commissioner, and she had like, you know what I mean? She was concerned. That's why I'm like, I couldn't tell because, it, like, to me, looking her eyes, she like she was like, oh, like she was really concerned. But that's why I was asking her, like, how do we get anything or any kind of accountability when we're fighting when the top of it? You know what I mean? The top of this shit is all dirty and corrupted, mm-hmm. and they're yeah. more dirtier and corrupted than the people we're going after. Yeah. No, it gets, it gets like, you know, I, I always say the evil empire. We're fighting the evil empire yeah. on some Star Wars shit. No, I mean, it's also like the massive I'm, bureaucracy of the whole thing. Like, with my reporting, one area I've covered a lot is the National Institutes of Health. Um, they were given, uh, like, over a billion dollars at the end of 2020 to research long COVID. And, you know, what, like, a lot of scientists and advocates and think and what I found in my reporting is, like, they wasted a lot of that money it's complicated to go into the whole story, but like a lot of it goes down to the NIH having this like very, um, you know, hard to parse and sort of hard to change bureaucracy. And so it's like they're facing this chronic disease that they haven't, like a disease that they've under, like a disease similar to others they've underfunded for doc- decades, haven't studied, they have mm. no infrastructure, like they haven't been supporting the researchers who have been doing this kind of work for a long time. And so, you know, all, all, all that sort of contributes to spending all this money and, like, not, not making very much progress on getting people treatments. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there are so many, like, that's just one example, but there's stuff like this, like, across every level of government, mm-hmm. you know, and that's, that's kind of what we're dealing with is, like, all of these systems that are just not set up for the problems that we now are facing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, just, I just feel like, all these people that's in charge are just like rich and snobby. Yeah. They don't care. About <laughs> well, and even when they have the resources, they're not using it in the right way. And yeah. that's why now we have, you know, like the mutual aid, like mutual aid has to come in and like plug in these gaps, you know? Yeah. It's like the mass blocks that do this work that public health departments should be doing or like yeah. we the people like giving out food. And it's like, shouldn't a government like, you know, theoretically yeah. we pay taxes. Like, isn't yeah. that what our taxes yeah. should be going to? But no, it just goes to the cops. Like we pay life insurance policies and shit. Like where's the insurer yeah. yeah. that we're yeah. going to be alive? Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, part to the government. Mm. Also, like, I just want to say we like as minor communities, I hate that word minority, but like queer, you know, as black and brown people, like, we are the majority around the world. Yeah. You know, they like to make us seem so inferior. But, like, low-key, we went to two actions in one day. We we went to Juve, then we went to the Wool Action, then we went right back to Juve because yeah. it ended earlier than we expected. So just imagine the revolution starting that day. Like, it could have been, like, January 6th, but, like, revolutionary. Yeah. Like, if the Caribbean parade paired up with Wool, like, the big biggest Palestinian movement in like New York City. Yeah. Like that like could have been woo. Yeah. Like I mean, monumental. Yeah. It's like the solidarity between everybody. Oh my God. Yeah. That like you know what I'm saying? Just do coming outside for the right reasons and like mm-hmm. realizing that this these problems are intersectional. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like cuz there's a lot of Haitian flags out there like Wool could have really brought that up, you know, but also like the Korean community just having the chance to be more aware and like receptive to that information yeah just a lot of work needs to be done we can do it we can really yeah. take this shit over for real. Yeah, some folks in the disability community talk about the same thing it's like wearing a mask right like protects you from disease protects but also protects you from state surveillance and like all of this mm-hmm. stuff you know so it's yeah. like one of those things that can bring a lot of solidarity just by like doing it on the subway or in, in any other kinds of public spaces and in numbers and numbers, in numbers that's yeah. a good point yeah you made. State surveillance is getting worse too, y'all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah fuck these cameras. Worse. Yeah, yeah. Besides yeah. the ones you choose to put in your <laughs> face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, man. I feel like that was a great episode. Is there anything yeah. else anybody want to plug in, or are we good? 
No. no. Follow the sick times. Support mass yeah, blocks. Talk. You know. Talk, yeah. talk, talk. Yeah. Talk. Yeah. That's um. Oh, oh, hold on, wait a minute. We gotta do our. Say that, um, say that one more time because we're gonna, call we're gonna have that joint go across the screen like. Z. All right, so yeah. call out what? Uh, follow the sick times. Sick times. Yeah. You and can Rue Google Mechanical us, Orchestra. look at us on. Oh yeah, Room Mechanical Orchestra. Invite us to your actions. Yeah. Yeah. If you want some energy. If yes. you don't got no energy, <laughs> don't call them. <laughs> it's, all, it's okay. We can bring the energy. We can do it. <laughs> all right. Um, yo, shout out to Rudy. Right. Shout out to Rudy. Dollars. Shout out to Rudy. Wish Rudy was here tonight mm, or today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rudy got to handle his business. Hopefully, he'll be back next week. I definitely wanted you to hear um, so you could have talked to Betsy and y'all could have, like, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Maybe Before another time. Told her about your experience and everything, and we could have ah, formed some more people. Yeah. yeah, but um, shout out to Rudy handling his Black Sky business. Make sure y'all jump on Black Sky. Um, you know what I mean? It's like the Black Twitter for uh, Blue Sky. So jump on there and um, yeah, we ain't fucking with Elon. <laughs> fuck yeah. Elon. Yeah, fuck Elon. Right. Um, <laughs> shout out to oh, you want to talk? Yee! Oh. Shout out to um my brand, my business. Yes. Um, at Dimes underscore Beauty Inc. Don's Beauty Inc. is a brand about self-care, feeling good, looking good. So I do a little bit of everything from photography to hair styling to making clothes. So like, yeah. Yeah, it's making people feel good. So support black-owned businesses, support black creatives. Like Relly said, shout out to Rudy for creating a black Twitter, you know. Amplification is important for like black people and black creatives. So definitely shout out to that. Yeah. Yeah. Also... Stonewall was a riot. <laughs> At Stonewall dot was a riot. Stonewall was a riot, you know, is a youth curated prioritizing black and queer people, black and brown queer people. So please, please support, support, support. We are looking for more youth organizers. Uh, I've been networking with other people. We've been finding a few. So, like, please, like, continue to tap in, fill out that form for more information on how you can get involved. Organizing with us, we do safe space events as well as direct actions and protests. So stay tuned for the next one. We're going to do one, like I said, we're still keeping up every month. So we got one planned for September, but we'll see. So yeah. follow. Stay tuned for that. Yeah. Beep, 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 beep. Beep, beep, beep. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to, um, oh, the People's Backyard. We, um... Like we said, we're gonna be every Saturday. All right, we took a break this Saturday because we really want to like uh, focus and and get everything together to pump out next week with the performers. Uh, make sure everything is straight. So instead of rushing there every Saturday, we're gonna take our time and get it started this Saturday. And once we get it started, then it should be rolling by then. Like we should. We be need all RMO to play at the people's backyard. I yeah. can't believe that hasn't happened yet. Oh, no, y'all need to. to. Oh my yeah. gosh, then we could get the mic and we could do the yeah. chance yeah. live yeah that would be fire yeah, yeah. We me and really good mic yeah. Yeah. yeah let's try to figure out before we get too we cold we can have the full band with that too yes yeah <laughs> that would be yeah rude mechanical no, orchestra gotta... x the people's backyard <laughs> we should we should yeah we should turn that into a fundraiser for somebody oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. we'll figure it out it could be like yeah. we the people we yeah. the people fundraiser yeah yeah Swan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, we're gonna talk about that. Yeah, yeah. figure some things out. Yeah. Um hmm. shit. Oh, shout out to uh do we the people? No. We the people every Thursday. <laughs> talk. Every yes. Thursday Can't forget. on the corner of Fulton and Nostrand, starting at one o'clock every Saturday in Harlem, um on Lexington between one twenty fourth and one twenty fifth, starting talk. at one o'clock. Pull up, we doing our thing, mutual aid, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um and uh, shout out to Steph in the back, handling your business. Yeah, out. Yeah, we appreciate you, brother, for you know me, holding it down today. And uh, one more time, shout out to Rudy. Right, shout out to Rudy. Shout out to Rudy. Out. Yeah, all right, so I'm going to do the music down, like uh, the outro. All right, ready? Boom. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom. All right, y'all, this has been an episode of Unapologetic Talks. Talks. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs>